Welcome to Eventual Millionaire. I'm Jamie Tardy, and I'm really excited to have Kevin Thompson on the show. He's a direct response marketer, connector. You can check him out at partnershipplaybook.com. Thanks so much for coming on the show today. You bet. My pleasure, Jamie. So you told me at the beginning, which I thought was awesome, is that you started out doing carpet cleaning and <laughs> got into this world. So tell me a little bit about how that led you to direct response. Uh, I started a carpet cleaning business back in 1996. And uh, uh, after spending seven years working as a commercial fisherman in Alaska to save up money to start that business. Go you. And, uh, and uh, so if you've ever seen that show called Deadliest Catch, that, that's what I used to do. Seven years of doing that. Uh, saved up $200,000 in that process with the sole goal of starting my own business. And uh, opened the doors on that business in 1996. Uh, invested about $80,000 to buy a van, cleaning equipment, that kind of thing. And over the course of the next year, not knowing what I was doing, uh, I blew through pretty much all of that $200,000. And so, so this idea that I hear that entrepreneurs or, or, or aspiring entrepreneurs will say, well, if I just had more money, then I could be successful. Then I could do what I, not true. Because I had what I thought was a pretty good chunk of money, and I still didn't figure it out. <laughs> uh, but fortunately, uh, I was looking through a trade magazine for the cleaning and restoration industry. I found this article by this guy, Joe Polish. Uh, and, and the article said, I can show you how to get more clients in a month than you now get all year. And I was like, boy, I could use some of that. And so long story short, I got uh, set up with Joe Polish. Uh, he, he helped me transform that business, mm -hmm. completely turn it around over a three-year period. And he was my introduction to direct response marketing. And, uh, and we haven't looked back since. So. How lucky are you that you picked the same industry that, you know, the amazing Joe Polish was in? T you know, it's kind of crazy because yeah. that, I mean, it's insane to see like how huge he is now in this space yeah. based on doing that. So it was like a divine intervention or something that you guys met up. So tell us how you went from that to doing what you are now. So we, we uh, you know, he helped me turn that business around. And, and what, I, what I found out in that process uh, by 1999, three years later, was that what I really loved was the marketing. I, I did, th there was aspects of running a carpet cleaning business that I enjoyed, but there was also a lot uh, that I had to do in that business that I did not enjoy. And, and so I figured out that, like, you know what, this isn't what you really want to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I was working a lot of hours, and and you know, but people on the outside looking in thought, oh gosh, Kev, you've got such a successful business, but I did not feel that way, and uh, and so I started really doing some soul searching, and and just like you know, and and the next year, in uh, actually, I guess it was later in '99, I was at a Dan Kennedy seminar, who I actually met through Joe Polish, uh, and I met two guys at that seminar. I met Yannick Silver, mm -hmm. and I met Perry Marshall. And, and man, I'll tell you what, I am, I am so thankful that I met those guys. Uh, they were playing around doing some stuff on the internet at that time. And I thought, oh gosh, maybe there's something here for me. And so with their assistance, I took what I knew from the cleaning industry. I started this little ugly, probably one of the ugliest websites on the internet called getmoldsolutions.com. And, sexy. uh, I, yeah, <laughs> uh, really sexy stuff, huh? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, it's kind of like watching the grass grow. <laughs> Unless, of course, you've got a mold problem, then you're all about what I have Heck to say. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so, I'll pay you anything you want. Get rid of this for sure. Right. <laughs> that's right. And uh, and we got that uh, website making about twelve thousand dollars a month. Uh, and, uh, and a couple of years later, Joe uh, invited me to come speak at his big annual seminar for the cleaning industry. He's like, "Why don't you just show these people what you're doing?" And I'm like, sure. And so I went down there. I spoke for about an hour. And after my presentation, I was mobbed by all these people at the back of the room wanting me to help them. Hmm. And, and Joe saw what was going on. And he's like, Kevin, he's like, here's what we're going to do. You're going to come back next year. But between now and then, you're going to document what you do and how you do it. And you're going to put it into a course so you can give these people what they want. And so we did that. And 2003, October of that year, I went back down. I spoke at Joe's again. No formal speaking experience. I mean, just just a passion for showing people what I was doing. And we made $35,000 in sales of that course. Crazy. 
Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that was a whole lot more money than I ever made in 40 minutes or an hour cleaning carpets. And so I'm like, you know, I want to do a lot more of this. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah. Let's fast forward to now. Cause I, I really want to get into the, the landscape has changed big time since then to now. I mean, I used to work in the internet company back in 1998 too. Like it's insane what has changed. So yeah. tell me a little bit about like direct, direct response or just marketing in general online nowadays is it what it used to be and like there's so much more competition give me a little bit of a heads up on what you think's going on sure yeah definitely definitely a lot more competition for sure a lot more you know of and 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 also you know we'll say pre 2000 a lot a lot changed in 2007 2008 you know and and there was a lot of crazy stuff going on people making outrageous claims i mean in the internet every industry was full of it but especially in the internet marketing world <laughs> Heck yeah it was pretty ridiculous and and now it's really more uh, about relationships creating relationships with people building that trust building that authority you can do it quickly uh, you, in fact, we we do it very quickly. Usually, within one to two days, we're taking people from interested prospect to paying customer. Wow. And so, but it is about building that relationship, and especially if for the the long term, uh, if you're expecting to build a long term successful business, it's going to be all about relationship. You're building that strong relationship, and and just letting people know that you you know that, that you for one are qualified to help them in some way. And that you're willing to help them and just laying out, okay, this is what that looks like. Here's how I can help you. Here's what this is going to look like. And, and yeah, just building that relationship. That's, that's critical uh, in today for okay. sure. So I have lots of questions on that. Cause, and, and I was just telling you, we're friends on Facebook. We have 132 mutual friends. Like, thank goodness we have the internet to tell us how many mutual <laughs> friends we have. But it's a lot, right? So tell me yeah. how you started building up that network. Because I know a lot of people, especially that are newer online, are like, okay, that's great. But how do I actually make friends with all these people or build these relationships and not be like one of those, you know what I mean? Like, oh, please look at me, talk to me, because mm-hmm. yep. that's yep. that's not good. That's right. It doesn't work. You know, it's when you when you reach, try to reach out to people. I mean, quite honestly, you know, the traditional networking, that's why it sucks so bad is because everybody who comes into that environment is all about talking about me, 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 me. Here, look at me, look at my thing. And everybody's doing that. And nobody's listening to anybody. And, and in reality, what you, the way that you reach out to people, the way that you get people's attention is by showing appreciation, not by reaching out with your hand out. And, and, and to take it one step further, by showing appreciation to people. And I will tell you, no matter how successful somebody is, no matter how big of a business they run. I was at an event last year where I heard Jay Abraham speaking from stage. Mm-hmm. And it was actually at an event that Sean Stevenson put on. I don't know if you know Sean or not. Sean's an yep, incredible guy. I do. And, uh, and, and Jay was, Sean asked, you know, uh, uh, Jay, what, what, what's, what's the thing that like he treasures most, that he values most in his life? And he's like, you know what it is? He's like, it's when people come back to me and they just tell me, Jay, I really appreciate you for showing me this or whatever for explaining. And he's like, just showing. And here's Jay, who's been doing what he does for years. And his number one thing that gets his attention the most is appreciation. Hmm. And, and that is so true. And when we just can do that and be genuinely appreciative of other people, I mean, you're going to open doors so quickly, it'll make your head spin. Now, and once you got the door open, there's specific things you want to do for sure, too. But yeah, that's how you're going to open doors. And you can, I mean, I've opened so many doors that way. <laughs> okay, give me tactics on this because people are like, great appreciation. How do I do that? Yes. Okay. So you know what? Okay, I'll give you. I'll give you a quick exercise for everybody because no matter who you are right now, you got y'all got one of these. You got to sell. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> okay. You got contacts in there, and you got people who might be business contacts. They might be personal friends. They might be family. What have you? What I want you to do, you try this out, and you're going to have such an incredible experience. You're gonna you're gonna be thanking me for this. You want to start text messaging some people, and you're gonna send some love. You're gonna show some appreciation. And what you're going to do is be genuine about this. Let people know, you know, let those think about something that you genuinely appreciate about that person. And you send a text message and you let them know. I don't care if you haven't talked to them in five years. It doesn't matter. Send them some appreciation. Send them some love. Don't ask for anything in return. Don't ask for a thing in return. Don't say, hey, can't wait to hear back. No, just send out some love. 
And if you will do that to 10, 15, 20 people that you have in your contact list, I guarantee you, people are going to, now not everybody will get back to you, but some people are going to get back to you and you are going to have such an incredible experience and you're going to be like, my gosh, Kev, this works. This works. Do you do that on a, because I do something similar. I'll usually people that I've talked to within the last year, but usually I'll send like a little thinking of you text with like hearts, you know what I mean? Or something to just be like, oh, you're on my mind kind of a thing. But Uh I don't do it as like, I don't have a structure for it. It's just sort of when I'm actually thinking of them, which is good because I don't want to lie to them. But of course, you know what I mean? Like, do you have a structure of like how often you do that to people or anything like that? Okay. What I can tell you is I do it multiple times and I do it daily. Oh, you do it daily. I do it daily. And I, so like, I can just tell you yesterday, I mean, for example, I was uh, catching up with a friend of mine. His name is Steve Sims. He owns a company called Bluefish. Uh, and, I, and I know, you know, Steve's got a very successful company, but I also know one of his goals is he wants to start speaking more. Hmm. And, and, and I saw a post of his on Facebook not too long ago where he actually had the opportunity to speak at the Pentagon. Wow. And, and I and I saw that, but I hadn't talked to him or anything. So I just texted him yesterday and I said, hey, Steve, you know, saw, saw the photos from the Pentagon. How's your speaking career going? And, and just use that to catch up. And of course, that for him, I know that's a hot button. Mm. And, and so to, you know, that immediately got a conversation going. But, you know, Steve and I, we already have a relationship. And so that's just kind of a catching up thing. But I will tell you, I do that like three, four, five times a day with different people that I just am continually, it doesn't take much time. And, and he was just grateful that I asked. He's like, wow, Kev, thanks so much for asking. I got this big presentation. Actually, we mentioned Joe Polish. He's speaking, Joe Polish is doing his big annual event next month and Steve is speaking there. So he's pretty excited about that. And I'm like, fantastic, I'll see you there. You know, so that kind of stuff mm. and, and just taking that active role and showing appreciation for people and when you do that, like I said, you, you open massive doors. Uh, people are always willing to talk with you. And I guarantee you, like, you, we'll use the example of Steve. If I ever reached out to Steve and said, hey, Steve, I want to run something by you or I got a favor to ask of you or whatever, I'm going to get a response just because of the relationship that we have. Mm, that's awesome. Okay, cool. So once we establish that and we've got some sort of relationship going with them, the ask is really hard for people. So the asking for the favor or it's hard for me too. I have tons of friends, but I'm like, Oh, I don't want to (laughs) like ask. So what are some tips on like that? Cause you've had so many, and maybe you could give us some, um, before we talk about that, how you do the partnership sort of, um, you've had 400 or something like that partnerships. And I'm like, that's insane (laughs) to have that many. So like, give us sort of a, a spiel on on you and your and your expertise in this and that way we can go into the tactics on like how because you've done this a lot and I want to tell people how much you've done this so that way they understand this isn't just you know you going hey these are great tips Uh uh-huh well so we go back you know to to 2003 that whole experience with Joe Polish and speaking at his event you know that was my very first partnership except for I didn't even realize what the heck was going on you know I was already Joe and I already had a relationship we, I, I had so much appreciation for him. And then now that I had kind of figured this thing out, he was like, Kev, just come down here and share with everybody what you got going on. And, and then had that experience. And the next year invited me back. And, and I had never done anything like that before. And so the uh, couple of weeks before going down there, I had called Joe's office. And I talk, talked with his assistant, Eunice. And I told her what was going on. I said, you know, Joe's got me coming down here to speak and I'm going to offer this course and I've never done this before. How does this typically work? And Eunice was like, well, Kevin, the way this normally works is Joe has invested a considerable amount of money to build the audience, get people there at that event. And usually when somebody does speak and they offer something for sale, well, then they just split the proceeds 50-50 with Joe. And I'm like, okay, great. And so we did that. And, I, and it was the simplest thing. And like where, where, you know, I mean, we're like you talked about, Jamie, that a lot of people are like, you know, they're asking for this and they're trying to get people to, you know, to work with them and collaborate with them. And they're just beating their head against the wall because nobody's responding. But yet this experience that I had with Joe, because of the way it unfolded, it was like the most natural thing in the world. Mm -hmm. And, and I didn't even realize what was going on or what had happened. It was a great experience, and uh, it, it did launch a new business for me because I sold. That was in October of 03, April 19th of 04. I sold my carpet cleaning business and moved into this full time. And so we really kicked off. And we're gonna, but like not knowing what was happening, 
I didn't do another collaborative project until June of 07. Because <laughs> huh. I, I just started marketing my business. We were doing stuff online. We were doing direct mail. It was, it was working well. But it was in, in June of 07, actually probably about May of that year, I was at Dan Kennedy's uh, or Glazer Kennedy's uh, uh, annual event. And I had hooked up with this other guy that I had already known. And his name was Mike Crow. And he kind of did what Joe did in the carpet cleaning business, Mike did for home inspectors. Hmm. And we were just catching up. And, and he, he found out what I was up to and what I was doing. He's like, Kevin, he said, you know what? He said, we should introduce your thing to my home inspectors. I'm like, really? You think they'd be interested? He's like, I really do. And so, and once again, it was a simple thing. He just sent out a couple emails to his audience, his subscribers. We held this event for them and we did 48,000 and something in sales. And I was like, wow, what a great experience. And that's when it dawned on me finally I want to do a whole lot more of this. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and with Mike, you know, he was, he was a friend of mine. He was somebody I already knew. And in my product, we offer it at either two or three installments of three ninety seven. So I do recall vividly when I, when we did that project, I'd never done anything like that before, but I was like, well, we got all these installments of three ninety seven that just came in. Let me overnight Mike a check based on his, his percentage of this and if we get any returns or whatever, I'll just take it out of the second or third check. So I'll be sending him. Mm -hmm. And so I overnighted him a check. He calls me the next day and he's just going nuts because he's like, Kevin, I have never had anybody overnight me a check. And, and it made such an impact that I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to always overnight the check. Oh, that's smart. And, and so we've done that. And, and I can tell you that, you know, after that experience with Mike, I, I immediately realized, okay, you want to do a whole lot more of this. Uh, and I, was, I did do a whole lot more of that uh, for that next several years. We stumbled and bumbled around. I, I did a lot of projects. Uh, a lot of them were nothing close to the experience that I had with Joe and Mike. I bet, right? <laughs> I, mean, I found myself partnering with people that, quite honestly, uh, I would never do it again. It was a learning experience. Uh, some of them were profitable. Uh, most of them were not. Uh, and like I said, it, I, was, I was stumbling and bumbling trying to figure this stuff out. And it wasn't until uh, the end of January in 2010 that I made the big discovery. Uh, that, uh, cause you know, when you, when you do these collaborative projects like this and like I did with Mike and like I did with Joe, when I pay them monies at the end of the year, you have to give them 1099s and report to the IRS how much money you paid them. Yep. And so, so in, in January of 2010, my accountant did all my 1099s for that year. And, and afterwards when he, when he had them already, he's like, Kevin, he's like, can I talk with you about this really quick? And I'm like, sure. So we made a time to talk. And he's like, you know, he's like, look at this. He's like, you did like 36 of these collaborative projects with these people last year. But if you look at the numbers, he's like, eight of them produced over 80% of your results. Mm -hmm. And I was rule. like, yeah, <laughs> isn't that? I mean, and, and, and so I was like, yeah, here that was staring me right in the face. And I'm like, Okay, so I really started analyzing this. What made and there were some good ones in the in the other, you know, twenty eight too. But but there was a lot of just bad experiences in that other group of twenty eight, and and so I really started looking at what made these projects so successful, and and there was like you know that that I had that immediate connection with somebody, you know, that I we both. You know, it, this wasn't like me trying to talk them into doing something with me. Some of the projects that I had were. And they were not successful where I was having to talk somebody into doing it. It was it, all the successful projects. It was an equal thing where we were both 100% committed and excited to do that project. Uh, and then the other a couple of things about my, my partners I've discovered is that, you know, one big thing is that they obviously have a good audience of subscribers, of prospects, of customers, what have you. Uh, they've got a great relationship with those people. Uh, there's already existing buyers in that audience. I used to think that went without selling uh, until I did a project one time with a guy and, and we, we, we were all excited. There's lots of people registering and he's like, how's it looking? I'm like, oh man, it's looking fantastic. And we're going to have a great time and we're going to have a go some great results tonight. As long as, you know, a good percentage of these people are already existing buyers. And he was like, oh, well, none of these people have ever bought anything from me. And I'm like, oh, I said, well, scratch everything I just said, because I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> so, so, but once I, once I figured out what those key indicators were, now I've just been able to attract my ideal prospect. And I really put a system in place to attract 
those, I'm not my ideal prospect, but my ideal partner, uh, and just give them a great experience so that afterwards, then they just want to tell more people about me. And just, that's what, that's what kept me going all these years. And that's how I've done over 400 collaborative projects is just by giving my partners and their audiences, their customers, a great experience, whether they buy or not. And, and just making, you know, just treating people like I'd want to be treated. And that's how, you know, and I, it's kind of funny because sometimes people will say, well, Kevin, you can't just keep on chasing down partners. And yet I've never felt that way at all. I just kind of like attract them is what I do just by being me, just by doing what I do and treating people how I'd want to be treated. So, so let's say you found somebody that w- seems like an ideal uh, fit for a partnership like this. Okay. Uh, maybe you've only met them once at a conference or something. Like your relationship isn't all that deep. What would be your steps to actually go and start asking them? Because that's the okay. piece where people are like, I don't know them that well. And yep. I feel kind of yep. weird asking them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And in a really, you know, this we this could get into a whole nother conversation. that Because this this thing about giving and receiving, Jamie, you know, you're like me. You're a, you're a giver. Mm-hmm. You are a giver, right? and and past not has been that receiving side of it, you know, and asking for what I want, and and there's a, there's uh, there's a whole nother discussion there. But what I can say is is if we have value to offer others, and we know we are a giver, then we owe it to ourselves and to others to become good at receiving too, <laughs> so that we can give them the experience of giving, which always makes us feel so good. And, and if we know we're that way, I'll just suffice it to say it that, that like if we know we're a giver, then get good at receiving too. Get good at receiving. Now, as far as the actual ask, I don't, I don't ask. What I usually do, in fact, what I, not usually, I always, what I will, when I meet somebody, I'm not going to ask them to promote me at all. Yeah, that's uh, what thinking. I'm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because it just doesn't seem right. It doesn't feel right. And like they don't even know me. And so if we have a conversation and I meet somebody and I want to connect with them better, all I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I, I used to just say, hey, why don't we follow up after this event? So if I'm at an event or, you know, whatever, if I'm talking on the phone, we'll just do it right there on the spot. But I'll say, why don't we set up a time to talk so I can find out more about you and your business and where you're wanting to go and find out if I might be able to help you in some way. Mm-hmm. And like, Who's going to say no to that? I mean, if you've made some kind of a connection, they are going to be, they're, they're going to respond positively to that. And so, so now once we have that call, and, and I used to like at, at live events, uh, I go to a fair amount of live events. I'm in mastermind groups and stuff, and I've made it really easy now because I don't say, hey, let's follow up later and set up a time to talk. If somebody meets the criteria where I want to have a conversation with them, I'm just telling them, hey, you know what? Go to my calendar. Go to ktcalendar.com right now when you get a chance. Set up a time to, that, that works best for you, and I will talk with you again, and we will have this follow-up conversation. And so I just put it – and like I do this at Joe's 25K group all the time, especially like on the first day. And then I'll, I'll tell people to do that. And by the next morning, I'll ask them, hey, did you set up a time for us to talk yet? Oh, no, no, no. Let me do that, you know. And so it gets them to take action now rather than put it off until later. I love that you and, have a URL too <laughs> yeah, for your yeah, calendar. Make, yeah, you got to make it easy. I mean, I got just a time trade calendar, but who wants to get, you know, I just got a domain name that I forward right to it so yep. it's easy for them to go to. That sucks. And so, so once we have, the, now we've got this conversation. Okay, now this is how we figure stuff out. Um, and, and I got it level with you. Uh, this didn't come from my brain. Mm-hmm. Um, this comes courtesy of my friend and, and one of my mentors, Dan Sullivan, uh, who owns a company called Strategic Coach, which I'm involved in Dan's group too. Nice. And uh, he taught me this process. And it is just absolutely brilliant. So I'll, I'll give you a couple questions. And, and there's a specific outline for this. And, and so when you are now having this follow-up call with somebody uh, and getting to know them, the first question that I'm going to ask that person is if we were meeting here three years from today, and I mean, I, that's a time qualifier I like to use three years. You can use whatever time qualifier you want, but three years is a good one. Uh, if we were meeting here three years from today, what would have had to happen in your life, both personally and professionally, in order for you to be really happy with your results. <laughs> and, and Dan calls that, you know, that, that's part of his DOS conversation. And, and, and that question 
gets people thinking about, I mean, and, and when they start telling you, I mean, that gets you talk, them talking about their dreams, their aspirations, their goals, where they're wanting to go. They, they get so excited talking with you about that. And I will tell you too, when you're having this conversation, if, if I'm doing it in person, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have my iPad with me because I'm going to be taking notes. And if I'm doing it over the phone, I've got a document open on my computer and I'm letting them know, hey, if you hear me plunking mm -hmm. away on the keyboard, it's because I'm taking notes on, on what we discussed right now. And I'm also, if you don't mind, I'm going to record this conversation as well just for my own use, just in case I want to go back and listen to it later. And, and when you, just by saying that or just by doing that or them seeing you doing that, taking notes mm -hmm. on what they're telling you, how, how, what, what kind of impact do you think that's going to have on that relationship and on that conversation? Heck yeah. You actually care enough instead of, especially like, I'm glad you say that. Cause I've heard people like typing on their, their laptop while we're doing Skype calls. And I'm like, so you are doing something else and not listening to me. But if you say, <laughs> Hey, I'm actually taking notes on this. I'll be like, Oh, okay. Well then <laughs> like yeah. you actually care. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And then you're placing importance on the conversation. Mm. And so, so that's the first question. Okay. And like I said, they're going to get all animated. They're going to tell you of so much stuff, you know, and they're going to get all excited. And then once, and, and I might ask some clarifying questions so I can get more details, especially if they start telling me about their family and if they start talking about their children, well, I want to know the names of their children. I, I want to, I mean, this is for as much my benefit because I want to get to know who this person is. Because the more I get to know them and who they are and what they're all about and kind of a little bit about their background, the better I have an opportunity to be able to figure out how I can help them. And even if it's not them promoting me, I mean, no matter what, I'm going to leave them in a better spot than they were before they met me. I'm, I'm going to add value to their life somehow or another. And the more I find out, the more prepared I am to be able to do that. So, so that's the first question. And then the second question we're going to ask them is like, fantastic, you, know, you just got through telling me about all these incredible things that you want to do and where you're wanting to go in your life and your business. Let me ask you, what, what's prevented you from making all this a reality already? And so now they're going to start telling you about what they perceive as their roadblocks, the things standing in their way, the, the, the very real things that they believe are preventing them from getting to where they want to go. And, and when they start talking about this stuff, this is the feedback that's letting you know, okay, th this is where I, I, like you start looking at like how I can help this person based on what they're telling me right now. But don't make the mistake of now getting inside your own head and now like, oh, I want to tell them this. I want to tell them this. I want to, no, don't do that. You save that for later, okay? Stay in listening mode. Stay in listening mode, and, and, if, and if you will follow this process, I guarantee you, you're going to have so much, I mean, you're going to have incredible results because you do stay in that listening mode rather than trying to like, oh, well, I can help, I can do this, do, don't do that, you know, bite your tongue, hold off, just stay in listening mode, and you will have your opportunity to tell them all that kind of cool stuff later, <laughs> Okay. And so that's the second question. Then the third question that you're going to ask them, now that they've told you about the things that are standing in their way and preventing them from getting to where they want to go, now you get to ask a question is, what would it be like, Jamie, if none of that was even an issue? What, what if you didn't have to worry about none of that? And now they're going to get all animated again. Oh, my gosh, that would be <laughs> so awesome. I could do this and this. And, and now they start talking about even more than they were originally. Mm. Because now there's nothing standing in their way, and they're going to talk about you know all the stuff they talked about before, but even more than that. Because oh, what I really want to do is this. What I really want to do is this. And man, I could do this if I didn't have to worry about any of that. And see, so now you've got all this incredible feedback. And what I like to do is I, I, I mean, because I I might plan to spend you know 30 minutes to an hour having this conversation with somebody. And then what I'll just say is, you know what, Jamie, it's been so great talking with you and getting to know you. What I'd like to do, if you don't mind, 
is I'd like to like just take this in a little bit. I'm, I'm going to probably go back and review my notes. I'm going to go back and listen to this recording and take some more notes. And what I'd like to do, if you don't mind, is just can we schedule another time to talk, maybe a week from now or what have you? And what I'd like to do at that point in time is I'm just going to give this some thought and like I'm going to see if there's any just any way I can help you achieve some of the stuff that we've been talking about here. And who's going to say no to that? Nobody <laughs> says no to that. No, I don't want to do that, Kev. After they just had this engaging conversation, they're going to want to do that. And so now what happens is, even if you're brand new to this, it doesn't matter. You're going to have an incredible experience. Now you've got a week of leeway, mm -hmm. seven, 10 days of leeway. You've already got the next appointment scheduled to talk. They're going to be looking forward to it. You're going to be looking forward to it. Now you've got this week to start talking with people, you thinking this over and, and, and talking with people and figuring out how, you know, I mean, I, I'll even talk with other people going, man, I had this incredible conversation with so-and-so. Here's some things we talked about. And I got this call coming up with them. How do you see that I could best help them and stuff, you know? And, and if that, if that involves promoting me, then by all means, I'm going to suggest that, you know, I mean, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, I'm not going to name names because a lot of people know these people. Uh, but I, uh, last year I had this very conversation with someone. They were in the middle of a big launch, preparing for a big launch that was coming up in about two months. So they were investing a lot of time and effort and, and manpower and all that in this big launch, very busy, as you can imagine. Yeah. And, and, but I had this conversation with them and then we had the follow up call a week later. And after thinking about it, I just was able to say, you know what? You told me about this big launch you got coming up. And I know, man, you guys are like so busy right now and you're investing a lot into it, you know, manpower wise, financially, all of that. Let me ask you something. If, if there were a way for you to bring in a, a good amount of revenue right now and it took hardly any amount of time on your part at all and it could be done quickly within, say, a week or two, would that be something that you would find beneficial? And they were like, oh my gosh, Kev, that would be fantastic right now. And, and see, if I would have gone with my hand out, hey, can you help me? Can you promote my thing? Mm -hmm. No, I mean, they're busy. They ain't got time for me. They don't care about me. But because it was in the right context and we were going to get them what they needed, which was an increase in revenue at a time when they wanted to be able to have that expendable revenue to use for this thing they had come, upcoming, they were all on board and wanted to do it. And, and we had great results with that project because this wasn't about me talking them into it. This was about us together now. It was a mutually beneficial thing. Mm -hmm. They were going to get something that they wanted. I'm going to get something that I wanted. And I d found that out because of having that conversation with them. Mm -hmm. That's and perfect. see, and I, I just repeat that process over and over and over in my life. And, and of course, you know, once you've done that, and now you've got a friendship and now you've, you know, you've got somebody you've got a relationship with. Now it's just a man ma matter of maintaining those relationships, which I guess I, mean, I gave you the example, example of Steve Sims. Not hard, you know, really easy to do that. Mm -hmm. And, and, like, you know, and like, I will tell you that relationship capital is so much more valuable than any financial capital that we could ever have, you know. And, and I was having a conversation with Joe Polish not too long ago. I mean, Joe, you know, I mean, like you said, I, I, I count myself so fortunate to have met him way back just because I owned a carpet cleaning business because today him and I are like the best of friends. I mean, we talk, I've got dirt on Joe. I got big <laughs> dirt on Joe. That means you're really good friends. <laughs> That's awesome. But I mean, I, I am so blessed to have that guy in my life, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, uh, you know, I mean, when you, when you got people, and, and the thing is, I got lots of people like that in my life. And, I, and, and for me to think that I've got a business that facilitates me getting to have so many incredible relationships in my life, it just doesn't get any better. And, and the relationship capital is what leads to the financial capital. I love so. you saying that stuff because I, I mean, I, that's what I was. I grew up in the middle of nowhere in Maine, and my audience knows this. And I had no friends, nobody in this industry. And it's amazing to sort of see how giving and caring and amazing these people are that we've been able to meet. It has just like elevated not only my business life, but my personal life. Like tons of them are just really, really close friends. Um, but going back to what you were saying about this before, because for you, I, I know my audience is saying this in their head, right? So they're going, well, this makes sense for you, Kevin, because you have the numbers to back it up. So if you go after somebody, you're like, 
I know that I'm going to be able to deliver you this much revenue or whatever it is because it's proven and you know your numbers mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Yep. If we give you this audience, we should be able to get about this result kind of a thing. Yep. Yep. A lot of people, especially newer people, don't have that at all. So what exactly. can they do? Because it's it's almost a confidence thing, right? Where you can have these conversations with people, but still saying, hey, I can't say that I'm going to give you a whole bunch of revenue because we don't know yep. what the numbers are going to be. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. You are absolutely right. So so in that kind of, and, and quite honestly, so I, I gave you that one example, mm -hmm. okay? I have so many of these conversations mm -hmm that it does not lead to them promoting my product at all. It just doesn't because it's just not a right fit. And so, and, but in those other conversations, what I'm looking at is, okay, you know, based on what they've told me, who do I know that can help them? Or who do I know, you know, whatever that is. And, and even if I don't know somebody at the, t at the time, I don't care because I'm just going to start talking with people and finding out who who knows who, and I'm just going to get actively engaged in that process. Mm -hmm. And so, you're so an this, advocate for them solving their absolutely. problem, even if it doesn't have to do with you. That's awesome. Absolutely, and 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 a lot of times too, maybe there's something that they're wanting to do that. I mean, so I mean, because I don't want to place barriers on this, because all kinds of things can come from this. I mean, I've created product together with people before. Mm -hmm. I've done you know like live events or virtual events, teleseminars, webinars, what have you, that we turned into product. Uh, and 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 like they, I I brought my expertise to it, and they brought their expertise, and it was a co, you know, a co-creation kind of a thing. And they couldn't have done it without me. And so we we shared in the revenue that got created. I mean, there's there's so many things that can come from this. Uh, and, and a lot, I mean, I have made introductions. I mean, you know, what what's what I've really so like I'll give you I'll give you an example of this. Um Several years ago, uh, my friend Brian, Brian Kirch is his name. Uh, I was and, just hanging out with him last weekend. He's a good friend too. Brian oh, is I love an awesome him. guy. I've oh known Brian for years. Uh, I, I met him through Joe Polish too. And, and he used to work at Boardroom Reports. He yep. used to be an, in a you know, key position at Boardroom Reports. He had been there for years. And, and those guys are a huge, huge direct mail company. I mean, they mail millions of pieces of direct mail. But they don't, at the time, they didn't know the first thing about the internet. I mean, they're like, they, they don't, they're completely ignorant. And I mean, they just don't know. And and so Brian was talking to me and telling me, you know, hey, we're wanting to do some stuff online, but we just don't even know what the heck we're doing. And and he's like, we want to do some stuff with Google AdWords. And 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 uh, I'm like, well, do you know Perry Marshall? And, and he's like, well, I know of Perry, but I don't know him personally. I was like, well, I'm good friends with Perry. I was like, what I, I was like, I'll do. I'll introduce you guys because Perry and his team, I think they are experts at Google AdWords. And, and so that was hmm. the, the immediately seen thing that, that came of that. I was like, okay, here's, here's what Brian needs. And here's Perry, who's the guy hmm. to deliver that. And, and, uh, and so I introduced those guys under that pretense. But they got to talking among themselves and they they found out some other things about each other, and then they got the, the, what they opened was this unseen thing that neither one of them could have possibly saw that both of them would have walked right past had they not been having a conversation like like I show people how to do. <laughs> and and as a result of their conversation, Brian and Perry went on to do an event together. And I actually, I, I knew I was doing this interview today and I <laughs> thought I might end up talking about this. And I didn't even know how much revenue they did together. So I actually texted Perry this morning. And I was like, hey, that first event you did with Brian, I was like, how much revenue did you guys create? And he texted me back and he's like, he's like, safe figure, Kevin, 200,000. And and I and I honestly I knew they did that event, but I didn't even know how much revenue they created from it. And so to find that out today was really cool because it's several years later now, you know, and all because of an introduction that I just made for those two guys. And and so, so amazing. And they love you because like you didn't get oh, anything from it, but they adore you because not that they didn't before, but you know what I mean. <laughs> sure, sure. And, and so, and, and what I can tell you, you know, I, I, I have never, ever, uh, I, I've, I've figured this out now, but I'm like, I've, I've even had a conversation with Perry Marshall about this. I was like, you know, he's like, gosh, I, I've gotten really good at connecting people. And you know what, quite honestly, Jamie, anybody can do this. 
This is not like that. Like, I mean, if you just start having these conversations with people, you're going to get their respect. You're going to like you. They're going to want to hear more from you. And the more people you do this with, the more people you're going to connect and you're going to build your network. This is how you build a network. This is how you have fun doing it. And as far as getting compensated from it, I've never had because it. me and Perry were talking about it. And I was like, you know, I said, like, Perry, it doesn't seem right to introduce two people and then say, oh, and by the way, here, here's a contract you guys yeah. need to sign because if you do something together, I want to cut, you know. Um, so I've never, ever done that. Uh, I've never wanted to be a business or a joint venture, a partner broker or anything like that. Uh, I do get some really nice checks in the mail, though, because people do send me checks because they, they, they go on to do great things and they're just appreciative and they're like, Kevin, this wouldn't have happened without you. And so here's a token of my appreciation. Thank you very much. And if you know anybody else you want to introduce me to, I'm <laughs> wide open to that too. Heck so, yeah. <laughs> and so it does happen. And, and now, you know, I, I have figured a way out a way to monetize it, which just works for me. I don't take percentages of, of revenues or anything like that. People offer, uh, you know, thank yous that way and stuff. But I just, I just like being this connector. And, and because I'm able to... You know, the, the, the big thing, like I said, is, is, is giving them the spy glasses, those x-ray spy glasses, so to speak, so that they can uncover those unseen things because that's where the big opportunity is. Mm -hmm. And that's where the exponential growth comes from. That's where the breakthroughs come from. And quite honestly, like I said, anybody can do this, but it's about getting out of your own head, mm -hmm. getting out of like what I want. I want people to promote me. I want people to promote my thing because nobody responds to that. Nobody responds to that. Nobody yeah, and then everyone goes like this. Okay, yeah. people. Yeah. I'm not going to hang out with you as much anymore. Yeah. That's right. That's right. But yeah, you do it this way, you'll have people loving to have conversations with you. And they'll be looking forward to it. And they'll be wanting to have more conversations with you. And, and then, you know, you, you start becoming a connector for people like this. And then a good number of those people are going to be wanting to help you too. And, and, and so even if like that person is not a right fit to promote me or what have you, I'll just simply ask them, you know what? I mean, so I've made an introduction or helped them in some way. And I'll just say, Hey, you know what, based on the conversations we've had and now, you know, I, uh, and like I, I let them know a little bit about me and what I do, you know, do you know anybody that I should be having a conversation with that might be a right fit for me to talk with? Yeah. And so now they're introducing, oh, I do know this guy. You sh yeah, yeah, you should be talking to so-and-so. Let me make that introduction for you. And now that when they make that introduction, I mean, do you, do you think they're, they're, they're doing it because they have to and they're, so they're going to be grudgingly? Do no, they're doing it. And they're like, oh, my gosh, you know, hey, Joe, you got to meet Kevin. Let me tell you about Kevin. Let me tell you why you want to talk with Kevin. And, man, you guys are going to have an awesome conversation. Take it from here. And so now that door gets open. Mm -hmm. I just get to have that conversation. And in the process of all this, yes, we find people who like, yeah, Kev, this makes sense. I want to do this. I want to promote your thing to my audience. Yeah. See, this is perfect. It's so funny because, I mean, I just finished another millionaire interview with an amazing person and he was like, can I do anything for you? Can I help you? I'm like, well, I can help you and I can introduce you to so-and-so and I can do this. No, you don't need to help. And part of me is going, I need to just ask for something because they're all yeah. being nice, and, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, I super high level people that ask me constantly, what can I do for you? And I'm like, no, no, I'm good. Let me do this for you first. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, so I need to and I'll tell you. you. So Jamie, I used to be, that. I, we, I, I briefly mentioned Sean Stevenson, yep. you know? And I met Sean Stevenson in 09. He was at a seminar Actually, one of Joe Polish's carpet cleaning seminars. And, and there was like 500 plus people in the room. And I'm in the back of the room. And he shared for about an hour. And when he was done, they're, they're probably, I don't think there was a dry eye in the house. Ugh, you know? He's an amazing speaker. And, and, uh, and I was like, man, I want to meet this guy. I want to meet him. And, and it just turned out that that evening, I had a mutual friend of ours ended up introducing us. We go out to dinner with me and Sean and his dad, Greg. And, and I get to know those guys really well. And then I was doing an, an event at my, my, my home here in November of that year. So I invited Sean up and, and him and his dad came up to my home for this event that I was hosting. And, uh, and at that two-day event, I mean, I just shared a lot of like a lot, a lot more detail about what we're doing, what we've been talking about, this whole partnering and collaborating thing. And I was sharing how I'd been doing that. And, and, uh, and at the end of that two days, we had all gone out to dinner 
And and Sean was telling me, he's like, you know, Kev, I got to tell you, when me and dad got up here the other day and we flew into Seattle and it's pouring down rain up here and we had to drive what was supposed to be an hour to get up to your place from the airport that it turned into two hours because of the weather and the traffic. He said, I'm trying, I'm asking dad, okay, dad, remind me who the heck this Kevin Thompson guy is and why are we going to his house? And, and, but he's like, but now after two days, Kevin, he's like, I got to tell you, he's like, you have just, you have rocked my world and you have shared so much of yourself. And, and what I want to know now is what can I do for you? And just like you, Jamie, that's how I would always be. I'm good. I'm good. Because I just loved giving. Mm -hmm. I just loved giving. And, and Sean, he really laid into me. He's like, Kevin, he's like, you know what? When you provide so much value to somebody and now they ask you what they can do for you, your answer is not, no, I'm good. <laughs> that is the wrong answer. He's like, you need to let me give. He's like, and I don't care. If you don't have a good answer now, that's fine. But for crying out loud, then you just say, you know what, Sean? I don't have a good answer to that question right now. But when I do, I'll let you know. Is that okay? That's your answer. <laughs> And, and he's like, don't deprive somebody of being able to give to you. Mm. And, and, I, and, and that was just one. I mean, it, I didn't immediately get it. Uh, it took a couple more experiences, one with Joe Polish, another gentleman uh, by the name of Jesse Elder had to have a good conversation. Jesse's a good friend of mine, too. He's here Is in he? Austin. Okay. Yeah. I was just yeah. at his house yeah. the other day. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually doing a, a, an event with Jesse later this afternoon. Are you really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Aww, that's so awesome. But, uh, I, I've had to have some good conversations with these people that let it finally sink in and, and like, you know, be able to receive, too. Yeah. You know, and, and just let people do for me. And, and, uh, you know, when we, when we can do that, because Jamie, you, I mean, I can, I mean, you are, I mean, I, I've never even spoken with you before today, but I mean, you are just such a sweetheart. And of course, yeah, I want to do something for you too. I want to do something <laughs> for you too, you know? <laughs> Crap. Now I have to say, yes, I don't know. <laughs> no, I, at least I have a word, a language to say to you, right? There you go. This there has been so helpful. I know we have to start wrapping up soon, but oh my gosh, this is so ridiculously helpful, not only for me personally, but also for everybody else that's listening. I always ask the same last question and it's what's one action listeners can take this week to help move them forward towards their goal of a million okay so i kind of spilled the beans earlier with the, with the given the exercise on appreciation because okay. that that's the big thing right there you know and and i really i want to challenge you to do that don't don't just you know say oh yeah yeah i'll get around to that no i want you to do that i want you to do that today and you start sending out some text messages. You start showing some people in your life some genuine appreciation. Just let them know one thing. I mean, I don't, I don't even care if you don't even like the person that much. There's something that you appreciate about them. And if you need to, start with people who you just really do like a lot and just show some appreciation. Send out some love and you watch what happens. Don't ask for a response. Don't say, hey, get back to me. Look forward to hearing none of that. Just send out some love. Show some appreciation and you watch what happens. I mean, uh, I'll give you an example. I There's this gal in my life who I just I, I just really love. I don't talk with her hardly at all. Uh, and, and not too long ago, I sent her a text and just wanted to let her know. I just, you know what? I just want to let you know how much I appreciate it. You are such a sweetheart and you are such a giving and caring and generous person. And I just wanted to let you know that I want to acknowledge you for that. And she didn't get back to me for three days, but her response was, ah, you made me cry. And, and that was so powerful. And, and, you know, to be able to have that kind of an impact on people by all just doing something. And, uh, you know, this, this, this is a thing called my, my friend, Jesse, he calls it active appreciation. That's what he calls it. And, you know, and I've been doing this uh, in, in my life for a long time, but until I met Jesse, I didn't have a term for it, but active appreciation. And, and see, when you, see, because there's so many things in life that we can't control, but this is something that we totally can control. And the more we are show active appreciation towards people and we make this a regular part of our lives, the more we get coming back, the more we get, people just want to do for us. So you do that, do it today, do it with 10 or 15 people, 
You watch what happens because, like I said, when you do this and have this experience, you're going to be like, my gosh, Kevin was right. He was right about this. I'm so glad you brought that up because you know when people listen to podcasts, they heard it before, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, 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 the podcast is going to finish and then I'm going to forget all about it. So everybody right now, if you're in the car, you can make a note to Siri or whatever that you can do it when you're out of the car because don't text and drive. Or if you're you know, at the gym or something like that, but make sure you do it today because if you don't actually take action on it today, you're going to forget about it. It. So please do what he says. I highly recommend it. He knows what he's talking about. Listen. Okay. So where can we find out more about you and everything you're doing? You're awesome. Well, I'll tell you what. So depending on where you're at in your business right now, uh, if you are uh, like kind of in a startup phase or what have you, or you're, or, or you're wanting to get something going, I've got a website at partnershipplaybook.com. Right now, there's a, there's a case study there that you'll get access to. Uh, we're, we're updating that website as we go along, but if you're, so go there, get on my list. I'll be, I'll be, and, and I'll be more than happy to communicate with you. And if you want to tell me about your experience with doing this exercise, that would be a great way to reach out to me. Mm -hmm. Because if you want to tell me about that, I, I guarantee you, you're going to get a response from me. I don't care who you are. If you reach out to me and tell me I did it and here's my experience that I had, Kevin, I will respond to that. <laughs> And, uh, and if you're already at a spot where, where say you, you do, I don't know, Jamie, do any of your members, are, are they already like, do they have million dollar business experience? Some of them already. Some or? of them do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if you're in that spot and, and what I've shared with you is right, if you've already got million dollar business, experience, I don't care if like, if it's in your current thing right now, maybe it's, maybe you're in transition. Maybe, I mean, I've got some people I talk with that, you know, they got million dollar business experience plus over here, but they got a new thing going over here that they're just getting started and barely made anything with. And, and that's totally fine. Uh, but if you've got million dollar business experience under your belt, if you are one of these people who is giving, if you are willing to have an open, can candid conversation like we've been talking about here about your business, about where you're wanting to go, about what you feel is stopping you, all of that kind of stuff, I'd love to have a conversation with you and find out, is there a way that I can help you? And so we can fast track that. All you got to do is go to my calendar, ktcalendar.com. Set up a time that works for you and we'll have a conversation. So, so funny that I memorized your calendar. Like I was like, go to KT calendar in my head. <laughs> like I remember what that is. So only people that qualify for that though, because I don't. That's right. Uh, yeah. That's make right. sure that we are clear on that because we only have so yeah, much Yeah. Please time. don't waste my time or yours because yeah. if, you don't, if you don't have that already in place. It just doesn't make any sense for us to have that kind of a conversation. Yep. I can give you help through the website at Partnership Playbook. Definitely. Thank you we'll so much. we'll get you to that place. <laughs> exactly. Do what he says first with the appreciation thing and then tell him and then we can go from there. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Kevin. I really, really appreciate it. My pleasure, Jamie. I hope you enjoyed that interview. And if you want more like it, go to eventualmillionaire.com. If you click on the millionaire case studies, you will see over 200 millionaire interviews. I don't want you to get overwhelmed, of course, but I do want you to pick the one that might make the biggest difference in your business today. So what's something you're struggling with and take a look and see if one of those could specifically help you. Don't just take information for information's sake. I want you to be able to take the information, have it applicable to you right now. You use it, you take action, you see results, you come back and go, Jamie, that was amazing. That's what I want. So go check out eventualmillionaire.com and click on the millionaire case studies. Thanks.